two, one. How am I gonna do this? You gave me such a wonderful introduction that I don't know how I'm gonna ever top that. <laughs> no, it's totally true. But you should actually put that in. Put that in as the intro. I'm actually just gonna do it because you know what? People get so crazy when they have to wait for the yes guys. So now I've just done that to say the point, they can now get another one. Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel for a collaboration that has been in the making now. We, we've known each other for a blimmin' long time, you know. Over half a decade, which if you're not aware, that's 10 years. That is a long time. You guys have been asking for it. We've been asking each other for it, but because of time differences and goodness knows what other reasons, it's not quite happened here on GBFC, but it certainly did on Mr. Rory Jennings' channel. How are you, my man? Mate, I am honoured. This channel is the promised land, George. For any Chelsea fan, they will tell you that coming on this channel it really is the promised land. So I am touched, overwhelmed and honoured to be on. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I thought there'd never be a day where I actually find somebody who comes, comes up, up with, with as many, as many different, different wonderful, wonderful phrases, phrases to describe football as me. But unfortunately, whichever medal I created for myself, I no longer have the gold because you, Mr. Man, since you've come into the scene with your own channel, you are 100% the... The most well articulated, if I've even spoken correct English there, football fan, I think I know. So I'm very looking forward to this conversation because we're going to talk about an open-ended topic that I think we're both going to have maybe different opinions on, but at the same time, I think with the way things are going for our Chelsea right now, it could end up being quite similar. But we're going to talk about expectations, expectations that we might have had at the beginning of the season and then we can... Mostly I want to get your opinion on what happened back in January when Lem Lampard was sacked and then how now, after this incredible run that we are currently still on, but for an international break that's kind of ruined the tempo a little bit, and then obviously looking forward to the rest of this season, but into next season as well, where can we realistically see this Chelsea team going? Obviously we don't know who we're going to sign yet, but let's bring it back to the beginning of this season when Frank Lampard was still the manager what was what was your dream for what we could achieve at the beginning of this season the dream was the league i mean that was that was certainly where i hoped the season would develop um and i felt that off the back of last season we saw enough to suggest that we could challenge uh, two things happened that made me think that it were, were a possibility firstly lampard did very well in his first season you know, we got to the last 16 of the Champions League, top four, the Premier League and the FA Cup final. That, as a springboard, felt solid. We then had a huge recruitment drive in the summer, which I thought was going to help elevate us. And then one massive thing I didn't anticipate was Manchester City being as brilliant as they are. So I didn't realise that Man City were going to go, what, 24 wins in 25 games. Last season, they lost nine. They lost nine games last season. So I hoped that... Them dwindling off, Liverpool potentially coming to the end of their current cycle, Chelsea on the rise, I felt like it would put us in contention for the league. I didn't necessarily think we'd win it, but I wanted to challenge for the league. That was at the beginning of the season. Yeah, I think it, for me as well, when I look at where we were to finish in the top four with the squad that we had in Lampard's first season, to then add all of those players in that we did. I certainly feel as though right now, if we look at the Premier League table as to where we are, I would still say despite all of the hype that we've got going on at the moment, and clearly in terms of a trajectory, we're in like a very good run of form. We've got the momentum with us. But compared to what I really thought we would be doing at the beginning of the season, I'm actually a bit disappointed. You know, it's all well and good that we're we're all excited at the moment, as we should be. You know, I think it's very important that we ride this wave of good fortune and not just good fortune, but very much like looking at a team that is very solid. We're scoring not lots of goals, but enough goals to win football matches, which I'd always rather win 1-0 than draw 3-3 every week, which we were doing at times earlier this season. But I think as of what I thought at the beginning of the season, I am a little bit disappointed that we're not closer to Man City because... Although we can't do anything about what they do on a weekly basis, that run of form, 24 wins in 25 or whatever it was, and then a dodgy result against Man United, who seem to only turn up against teams like City. I, I, they, they turn up, but like in terms of the way they play, I'm, I think we both agree, but I'm not impressed by United at all. I know they're above us in the league. No, I 100% I, I agree with that. I think, look, Manchester City took 
took this season to realms that at the beginning of the season I didn't think were possible. The reason I thought we could challenge for the league is because I thought City would have a probably 15 points less than they currently have, which would have meant that it was yeah. all a bit tighter. And I also would say that we're probably... Liverpool, City, Chelsea are the three best sides. Like, I know Manchester, City, Manchester United have a lot of talent in their squad. You know, when you look at the, the likes of Lindelof, I'm not a huge Harry Maguire fan. I think he's good, but I don't think he's great. I think Fred and McTominay are fairly average. I feel like Chelsea should be the next challenger to Liverpool and City. And the fact that we weren't, I mean, that ultimately led to the demise of Frank Lampard, didn't it? Yeah, I think it, at one stage or another with that unbeaten run, because you've got to remember, we're on an unbeaten run now, but we also did have another one earlier in the season but I it, absolutely like which is huge it, it, I was never as confident though you know I, I always was because obviously I've been doing reviews of every single match this season and I like to watch the games back again and you know see were we really deserve it of two or three goals to nil like why did we concede three here at West Brom and all this stuff and I look at it and I was never certain I never felt confident that that run was going to keep going on under Lampard and I don't want to say that I was I'm not saying that as a critique of Lampard but I think from the way I was watching the football I was struggling to really see what it was about what we were doing that was stopping us from losing matches whereas now I think that it doesn't matter if it's Atletico Madrid Tottenham Liverpool at Anfield or let's just say Sheffield United at home in the cup I'm confident going into every game that we have a plan tactically behind what is set up on the field when we first look at that team sheet, that we can actually overcome any opposition, which I didn't feel like before. How do you feel about that? Well, you're right. I mean, we do. We are, we are a better team. We are a better team and we are better individually under Thomas Tuchel than we, are under Frank, than we were under Frank Lampard. It's because Thomas Tuchel is a better manager than Frank Lampard is today. My issue with the sacking of Lampard wasn't because I ever didn't think Tuchel was a better manager currently. It was because Frank Lampard's appointment was supposed to signify something different. It was supposed to be the end of the revolving door. It was supposed to be a project. And you can't give somebody their first you can't give somebody their first job in the Premier League and expect them not to make mistakes. It's his first job in top flight football. Of course there are gonna be mistakes. And I think people were kind of on board with those mistakes. People were prepared to be patient, let Lampard develop into the manager hopefully over the next couple of years that Thomas Tuchel is today. Chelsea made the decision, instant success is you know, a hallmark of the Abramovich era. We brought in a manager who is clearly a better manager than Frank Lampard is today. The only thing I'm surprised about with Tuchel, I mean, we knew he was good, the, the, European, the run to the European Cup final and the uh, double that he won in uh, France last year is a testament to that. Where he's really surprised me, I think this is actually the jewel in the crown of Tuchel, is the way certain individuals have managed to elevate their performances to such a level. Like Andreas Christensen is a player who I thought had a lot of frailties. I always found him very lightweight as a centre-half. Do you, do you, do you, there was one game which I think was a microcosm of Christensen. Do you remember the game? It was the first time Tottenham won at Stamford Bridge. Deli Ali had a really good game. Christian Eriksen scored. Do you remember? Yeah. I think it was, I mean, it's 3-1. I do, yeah. I think Eriksen scored a great goal from outside the box. In that yeah. game... Christian, uh, Christensen, just out of his depth. He looked so, so overawed. He was bullied um, and was at fault for a couple of goals. That, to me, felt like he, he just wasn't cut out for Premier League football. It wasn't that he wasn't a good player. It wasn't that he didn't have lots of attributes. It wasn't that, you know, we knew the player that he was when he was at Gladbach. He was a very good player. But I didn't think he was cut out for the Premier League. Since Tuchel's arrived, I mean, it, like, it sounds stupid and it sounds like I'm talking in hyperbole, but I, I really hope that people don't see it like that. But... You kind of have to now compare him to like the best defenders and the, the run that he's on. He's now more comparable to the likes of John Terry and Ricardo Carvalho than he is Rudiger or, or somebody like that. Because the form that he's displayed over the, over the Tuchel era, it's blown my mind. He's been phenomenal, hasn't he? Yeah, I think that's a perfect point, actually, to lead into where we move with the expectations between now and the end of the season. Because like you said, when, when we talk about great Chelsea defenders... It's not just remembering individual matches or like we just did there, we pinpointed a Christensen game that was the epitome of why we probably both agree that we didn't think he was a strong enough or a good enough defender for Chelsea compared to the likes of John Terry, Ricardo Cavallio, Gary Cahill, who I absolutely love dearly. So I think if we, if we hold on to that point about Christensen as the prime example of somebody who we could easily say right now is performing at a very, very top level of not only Premier League defending, but European defending, if we add in the performances 
from Rudiger as well against Atletico Madrid. In terms of what Chelsea can still achieve between now and the end of the season, do we start to forget about all of these things that have happened in the past with Rudiger average performances, Christensen, is he good enough? Not really, drops out the side, all of a sudden he comes back in. If we win one of the two trophies that we are still in and make the top four, I'll let you go into it yourself in terms of like what you think we're actually going to do and what you envisage could happen because I've seen your video on your channel where you go walking with the cows, bloody loved it. Um, and you have said that Chelsea will win the Champions League, which I absolutely love. But if we do win a trophy and finish in the top four come the end of this season, do all of these players that have been revolutionised under Thomas Tuchel begin to start going down as some of the greatest Chelsea players we've seen in recent years? Well, look, George, if, if Chelsea win a European Cup for the second time in our history, it's very difficult, isn't it? Because I would, I would say, as a slightly more romantic uh, viewer of, of football, I would say that if you've won a European Cup for your club, you are immediately legendary status. The, the, the fallacy here becomes then, is Ryan Bertrand a Chelsea legend? I would say yes, because I was in Munich. It was one of the greatest nights of my life. It was so unexpected. And any, anybody, whether it's Solomon Kalou, um, whether it's Ryan Bertrand, it doesn't matter who it is, whether it's Jose Bosingua, they all will occupy a special place in my heart until the day I die. And therefore, if that's repeated, Anyone, anyone will always be a part of that. Even David Luiz, somebody who actually has broken my heart since, I struggle to not love him. Like, he played yeah. in that European Cup final. He basically had one leg. He then pinged in a penalty. He celebrated in front of the Munich fans. He was a, he was a colossus of a defender that day. Since then, he's upset me, but I still, I still can't help myself but to love him. And that will be true... Uh, look, if Chelsea win the European Cup, and, I, and we, I think we can, I appreciate that we're outsiders, but I think that what we have to remember as, as Chelsea fans is that, you know, when we look at clubs, so the FA Cup final is a great example here. You know, when we got City, I think the, the general consensus among Chelsea fans was like, oh God, I guarantee you that City fans did the same face. City fans didn't want yeah. to play Chelsea. You know, if we, you know, if we beat Porto, Liverpool and Real Madrid fans, they don't want to play Chelsea. Liverpool and Real Madrid fans really want Porto to knock us out. So there's no reason why we can't do it. And in terms of what what it would mean to the status of the players in, at the club if they were to guide us to this... Uh, I mean, we could win two, like we did in 2012. We could win the FA Cup and the Champions League. I would say yes. Every single one of those players needs a statue built. <laughs> <laughs> I would happily take my hands and get dirty and come back to London to help build it as long as uh, you'll be there on the side with me. With, with the beers in hand. I think, re really, if I want to bring it back to whether I think this is going to happen, I'm, I'm very much like you, Rory. I'm a bit of a romantic when it comes to the whole dreaming in football. It, for me, it's what makes it, you know. If, if I can't have these little thoughts in my head or if I can't post something on Twitter where I get a bit carried away, it's just a little bit boring. And I feel as though it's not, you know, it, when, I always say the same thing about when you're with a woman. I think if you're with a woman, but you don't see yourself spending any more than a couple of months with her, then what is the bloody point in doing it in the first place? You know, you've got to look forward, think about the best, and only hope and, uh, and pray for, for the best of the best. I mean, I don't know how I've got into this here, but it is what it is. We're talking romance. You're totally right. Because, but also, the thing, the thing about football support, I mean, people, particularly since like, the, uh, the popularity of social media, people seem to do it in a, in a slightly different way. Like, sometimes people say to me, they'll go, you're very biased. And I, my name is Chelsea Rory. Like, <laughs> I, well, yeah, I mean, yes, absolutely, I, I am. And, I, and I, kind of, I kind of follow my heart from football and I see it in a very tribal way. And football support, by its very nature, is irrational. So this, it's irrational. That's why QPR fans sing, we're by far the greatest team the world has ever seen. They know they're not. They know that, of course they're not. Of, of course, Charlie Austin isn't in the greatest team the world has ever seen. But <laughs> they sing that because part of being a football supporter is blind, unilateral, aggressive, tribal belief in your team being the best, irrespective of fact. And that's the way that I, that's the way I approach it. And I think you kind of opt into that similar uh, ridiculous. When you, when you analyse it through any kind of rational prism... It's mental, <laughs> but, but yeah. it's fun. It's so fun. 
No, I absolutely agree with you. But I want to paint you, if I segue for a second, because we could talk romance all day long, Rory. I know we could. But I'm going to create a scenario here. And I want your honest, honest view from right now on March the 25th, 2021. If in two months' time, Chelsea Football Club are in a Champions League final, an FA Cup final, and a fifth in the Premier League, and we lose both finals. Would you think that Thomas Tuchel's appointment is still vindicated? The thing is with the appointment, the appointment, the, yes, the appointment will be vindicated if all of those things come true. I think that the appointment has proved to be correct in terms of what we're trying to achieve now. It just didn't make sense ever appointing Lampard. That's, that's the thing that baffles me. Appointing Tuchel, look, if Tuchel, it will be so disappointing. It, I mean, that, that story that you've just told there will be so disappointing. But yeah, if, look, if Chelsea get to a European Cup final, there is, there is some element of success in that. But it will be... like OK, here's a question for you. Uh, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to uh, answer your question by asking you another question. Absolutely. I like, this is exactly why I wanted this to be our video that we did together, because I knew that it would bounce like this. Go for it. Who had a better season last season? Chelsea or Arsenal? So Chelsea, quarter for, uh, uh, last 16 of the Champions League... FA Cup final, top four. Arsenal, none of the above, but the FA Cup. Who had a better season? I mean, I'm going to answer it and I'm going to give one. But based off of... I hate losing any, any final. Losing any final is the worst feeling in the world, whether it's Carabao Cup. You remember when we were there and we lost on penalties when we were on the kickoff together? That was absolutely disgraceful. That was horrible. Losing an FA Cup final... Is horrible and winning one is absolutely superb. So therefore, I would say as a fan, the experience of being a fan of my club, which is Chelsea, compared to an Arsenal fan, I think winning that cup would have actually probably put it above Chelsea in terms of that fan experience and what the season means to us. Because last season's never really going to go down in the, in the memory of any Chelsea fans as being special for anything because we didn't win a single trophy. Whereas from a footballing standpoint, and I think what it's done for Chelsea as a club moving forward and how I think what last season resembled could mean for us for the next five years compared to what it does for Arsenal from winning that FA Cup, I'd say that Chelsea had a better season. And, uh, you know, it's a very difficult question to answer, which is wonderful because like you as a fan, we revel in this the glory of winning a trophy and those moments of seeing your team at the final whistle on the pitch as the victors picking up medals and lifting up the cup is the reason why we all do this and why we support our teams the way we do. But in a footballing sense and from the grander side of things away from the romantic side, I think Chelsea's season last year securing top four, which credit to Lampard for doing that was an incredible job. Champions League last 16, hold your hands up and say we played the best team in Europe with a squad that was aged average about 21 years old. We lose 7-1. No problems. At least we're in the flipping competition. So for that reason, I would say Chelsea had a better season. The point I made about it being more important for Chelsea for the next five years, if you were to give Arsenal fans an opportunity to be in the position that Chelsea were in come the end of that FA Cup final... I actually think they'd probably bite your hand off because of what is needed at that club in order for them to get to a point where they can be in the same conversation that we're having now where we're actually challenging for competitions, the biggest ones of them all. Yeah, so I... Look, Chelsea's, Chelsea's season last year, finishing in the top four, is what has ultimately meant that we've signed Havertz, Werner, Chilwell, Ziyech... Because if you don't get top four, those players probably don't come. And also the club probably don't want to spend that kind of money. So that top four status has been huge for, for what it means to the club. But we lost an FA Cup final to Arsenal. Arsenal made history. That, that date, 2020, will forever be etched in Arsenal folklore. Right? They won an FA Cup. In, in 100 years' time, when Arsenal have won, I don't know how many they will have won. Hopefully, hopefully still 13. But when they've won however many, the reason they're on the number that they've got is because of that one. So it means something. Chelsea ultimately didn't really get that much out of it, it, tangibly at least. So I think that to go back to your first question about Tuchel, if it all kind of goes a little bit wrong, it will be deemed as it will be deemed as failure, but it wouldn't be deemed as failure by me. Would it you? And I completely agree. Yeah, I agree. 
I think, I, in, in hindsight, in my head, before we started this conversation, I thought we would actually come to that same agreement. And I wanted to play out those scenarios because I think it is important to touch upon the, the modern day football fan. I think we get so... We get so interrupted by these failures that they become almost a catastrophe because social media blows it into a proportion, into a realm that is just absolutely like there's no coming back from it. But I think in terms of what I would, the most important thing for me between now and the end of the season again, based off of what I've seen so far from Tuchel, I think the, the 14 games that we've had or the 13 games, whatever it is, there is more than enough in that little bubble of time that I know that with a summer, with, no matter who we bring in, I think we're in a position now where with still an incredibly young team, Chelsea are going to only grow. I only have one demand, demand. I only have one request on Tuchel between now and the end of the season. I think, and that is the top four. I think that I think yeah. that if if Tuchel secures top four and drops out to Porto and drops out to Man City, I think that that is still hugely successful. If we if we drop out to City, drop out to to Porto, and then don't make top four, I think that then it's then it's not good enough. But I'm fairly confident that we will make top four. Now, are you? I mean, I look at Leicester. Leicester are looking very good again. Goals, man. <laughs> Nobody can score against like, us. We're good. Do you know what the annoying thing's going to be? Like. If United get it, I know Man United is such a massive club and they have so many fans and any time you ever say anything bad about them, you know that you're going to have the floodgates of hatred and just delusion coming your way. I still don't understand how they're in the top four right now. And I, they're doing all right. They're doing very well. So credit to them. But if Chelsea are on this run now and we still don't make top four and Man United do, I'll be absolutely gutted because I've watched so much of them this season and I'm never, I'm never entertained, very rarely. And I always think they're going to concede a goal, but somehow they manage to get results. So I don't even think we need to worry about that because I think we will get top four. I'm, I, I'm, in, I'm in agreement because I, I also think... I think United will get there, though, George. I don't think United are going to have a problem at all. I think we'll be fine. The, the, the side that's currently there that I think could potentially drop out would be Leicester. I think, I think Leicester could be the ones simply because they've done it before. But I think, look, they're, they're looking good for it. So I feel like the top four as is, is probably going to be the top four come the end of the season. I agree with you, Mr. Rory Jennings. So when we look at that, we both kind of come to a decision that we could win the Champions League. It is a big if, it's a big maybe, it's a big might, it's a big dream, but there is potential of that. But away from that aside, if we take into account that we both believe the top four is Chelsea's for the taking, which it is, and that we will successfully achieve that come May. When we look into next season, I remember sitting there last year and at the end of last season thinking exactly the same as what you said earlier, that Man City won't be this good. If anything, we've got to worry about Liverpool being this astronomical out of this world force for many years to come and then all of a sudden the capitulation of dreams happen for everyone else who isn't Liverpool. Do we think that Chelsea Football Club, the way that we're looking like we're moving right now, with some summer sign-ins, and obviously there is one big one that everyone's talking about at the moment, Erling Haaland, if, I've said this before on the channel, but if I think if City sign him, I think it's curtains. I think it's game over for everybody. But let's say they don't sign him. He'll score 40 goals in that City team. 100%. He'd score more in that City team than he would in this Chelsea team, but that's, that's by the by, that's beyond the point. If Chelsea sign Haaland or City don't sign Haaland, let's use that as the final point of question here for the end. How close do you think this Chelsea team, the way that we're looking right now, could come to challenging for a Premier League, which we failed to do this season? To challenge? Uh, mate, we, we will challenge. Uh, we would, th there's no doubt that Chelsea, under Tuchel for a full season, will challenge for the league. Uh, winning it? Ah, oh, mate... This Man City team, to me, they just feel insurmountable. And I have to hold my hands up because I didn't think Pep Guardiola had it in him to reimagine himself and his side like this. Like, you know, the, the signing of Diaz was inspirational. The way that he's managed to, to turn John Stones into Franco Baresi is outrageous. Um, yeah. So the idea of challenging, absolutely. We should be hot on their tails. And if they slip up, we need to be there to make the most of it. But City look to me just look so good. They look. I mean, 
I, I kind of think if Chelsea aren't going to win the Champions League, I think they are. They just look, they look brilliant. Every time I watch them play, they seem to... Do you, do you know where else? It really strikes me quite how wonderful, uh, wonderful they are. When you see their bench... Do you know when you see, yeah. when you look at their bench and you're like so much quality. You're like you, you, yeah, you you bring in Riyad Mahrez on. Like Riyad Mahrez is the best player at most other clubs. You know what I mean? Like yeah, they're they're so strong. So City, in terms of will we win it? I'd say the smart money is still on City, but will we challenge? Mate, one hundred percent. And I am in universal agreement with everything you have just said, which I guess doesn't have that much to do with the fact that my camera is going to die in about two and a half <laughs> minutes because we could sit here all day discussing this because there is a lot of different angles to look at, you know. A lot of things depend on, you know, Chelsea champions of Europe. It sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Get used to it. It might well be happening. If that's the case, then our summer will be even better than it could be with an injection of cash and... Chelsea being the champions of Europe, being an incredible caveat for players to come and nibble on when Chelsea come knocking on the door. But I think we've covered virtually everything that I could have wanted to cover in this video about expectations, about what we could still see between now and the end of the season for our Chelsea, both Rory and myself are avid Chelsea fans. And I haven't said this yet, but I'm going to somehow interject it in the beginning of the video too. If you haven't subscribed to this man's YouTube channel, I implore you to do so. The link is down below. His videos are absolutely class. He sometimes takes a walk with a lovely dog, goes and sees the cows. I mean, even I don't do that. I think I've done it once actually with the cows, but you know, it, it, this man knows what he's doing and he knows what he's talking about. Rory, thank you so much for coming on the channel, mate. Oh, mate, as I said, uh, this, is, this is the promised land for any Chelsea fan. So thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy it, you know what to do. I ask it on every video. Hit the like button, subscribe if you are new and I'll catch you all later. Come on you blues. Well that was bloody wonderful wasn't it?